welcome back. Today I'm going to review the Win 5-Speed Benchtop Drill Press. This happens to be model number 4210T. And before I get started, I want to give credit to another YouTube posting. And I'll put a link over in the description of this video where you can access it. This gentleman compared the base model Win with the Harbor Freight base model drill press and as a result of his video I decided to go with the win so I want to give him credit for that he did a good job he has them both side by side and he also decided to go with the win but he does a good job of showing you the difference between those two products so I would encourage you to watch that after you watch this uh, this is the model that is one step up and I decided to go that way um, Basically, I decided to go a little better than the cheapest version. So let me show you how this works. I'll do a little bit of the unboxing. I'll show you how I put it together, and we'll go from there. Okay, here we go on opening up the Win Tennis Drill Press model 4210T. Owner's manual base plate table as far as the chuck I've invested in a higher quality chuck and the reason I did this is supposedly this you can tighten by hand It'll hold a much smaller drill bit, and the wobble is way less. I think it's 0 .004. So this is what's inside. Okay, this part I'm going to go ahead and leave in the box for now. I'm going to start some of the assembly that I know needs to be done. First step is to attach the column tube. These are 13 millimeter. Would have been nice if they had made this just a little more space so that I could use the ratcheting part. Once you get them started, they go in pretty easily. To get the table in place you're going to have to take this off. Mine was together. There's an Allen wrench that comes with it. Just loosen that. If you can't get it to come up and off just lightly tap with a hammer. Now the table goes in place. The part with uh, no teeth is the top. And it's easier, I think, if you get this started part way through there and then slide in place. This has to turn this. You have to make sure you lower this all the way into the collar of the base. Once you get that in place, now this can you know, want this to be pretty vertical and again I'm going to lightly tap tighten that Allen wrench or Allen screw, I guess. For some reason, after you do all that, it has you put the handle on. It also has Allen type screw. Okay, that's moving smoothly. And I'm ready to mount the, uh, the motor and housing.
Okay, this is the unit. It's fairly heavy. This is the one that has the LED light and the laser siding. So let me get the plastic off and see if I can lift this up and get it on there. All by my lonesome. Once you get the motor mounted on its post, there's also an Allen right here to secure that in place. So you you want to square it up and get it in the position you want it, and then just tighten that down. It's on the same side as the laser. To be perfectly honest with you, that didn't even take me 15 minutes, and it could have been quicker if I weren't trying to video it. So let me. Uh, get it arranged and we'll see how much noise it makes. I'm also going to have to turn it around because I want the cord on the opposite side. So let me go ahead and do that and uh, make sure, double check I have everything in the right place. Oh, I have to do the chuck is make sure that the the holding vise, those teeth are all the way in so that you have this flat surface. And then if you have a rubber mallet you're going to just tap it up with a good smack or two. If you don't have a rubber mallet, a piece of wood, and you have to have two people, and a hammer, but you're better off with a rubber mallet. So let me try it. So this new chuck will hold uh, 164th, 164th inch drill bits up to 5 eighths. And it's a JT33. Because you're getting that to stay in by friction. Now I did see there is a Allen wrench hole here. So maybe it also tightens to it. Still not sure if this little Allen wrench is what tightened onto that. I loosened it and now I'm tightening it. One of the complaints that I had heard or read was that these came unscrewed. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of medium strength thread locker on them and theory that will help hold them in place. And the medium strength will break free if you need it to. The other thing, there is a little cutout so you can get a wrench on that. So let me do that so I can get it tight before that dries. Quarter inch will do it just fine. So I'm guessing the person that complained didn't really tighten them up. This will have five speeds. This knob you just pull out, it doesn't twist. One of the small things that attracted this, and this is small, but there's a little uh, rubber or maybe a hard plastic clip that reduces vibration here and here and supposedly that helps with the noise. Another area where people made some complaints was that the belts were too loose and I think they just didn't realize that there's a belt tightening system here and it's by pushing the motor away with this spring and plunger and this lock. To install the batteries for the laser, for the uh, crosshairs, you can't quite see, but underneath there's a little tab here. You kind of push that, and this will slide out. And that gives you access. And that'll give you access for the batteries. I'm not using the ones that they supplied. It is AAA. I'm going with the uh, Duracell. A little 
tricky to do with one hand, but I was able to get that done. Maybe. I don't know if I can close with one hand. Here we go. So I'll turn the laser on. And there you can see the X. There is an adjustment if it's off, so that I'll work on later after I test it to see if it's on or not. The lights that came with it, those it's an LED and it's kind of a soft light. I think that will be fine. It's, it really doesn't glare on uh, the user. You can't see it, so it'll be indirect lighting. So should be okay. Okay, I turned it on earlier. It is very quiet. I'll turn the uh, laser on. I've not done any adjustments, so I don't know if this is actually going to nail that spot or not. But here's uh, the as far as the noise level. So that's acceptable to me. It's very quiet. So let me give you a close-up of me drilling a hole. This is mahogany, by the way. Like I said before, it's it's nice and quiet, so pretty happy. This is uh, you know one of the more economically priced drill presses on the market. Yeah, it looks to me like the laser needs to go back just a tiny little bit. Should be about right there. So hardly even that I can show on camera. But there are instructions on how to adjust that. So it looks like I need to make the X back a little further. But I still think that'll come in handy. You really should not open this with the unit plugged in, but I want to show you the belt's actually running. So again, you open this just by pulling this towards you and then lifting the on-off switch. You just lift this forward and you'll see the belts turn. Again, it's smooth and quiet, very happy with that. So let me shut that off. and unplug the unit. Okay, now we're safe to show you how to adjust the belts. The indicator on here uh, gives you an idea what you should, what speed you, you should use for different uh, materials, wood, aluminum or brass and iron and steel. So I will probably always be working in wood to change the speeds, you undo this little thumb screw, and then the motor you can kind of pull um, towards you and it releases, you can see that slight movement, releases the tension on the belt. And then you can walk this up or down, whichever way you wanna go. Um, I'm gonna go down, so I'm gonna start on the right. If you Remember, to go down, you start on the right. To go up, you start on the left. And I just figured that out on my own. It just was easier. That may or may not be correct. You just always want the belt going straight across, and you want to make sure it's behind this tab. Now, I actually want it on the faster speed. I'd put on that earlier. So to go up, again, I'm going to start on the left. Raise it. Spin it around, go to this side, and on the back side, I'm going to lift that belt up, spin it around, there it is. Now I'm going to push the motor away from me and tighten that wing nut, but I can't do it with one hand. So you'll just have to believe that I tightened that nut with two hands. With the laser feature on this, I had a little trouble with it not being exactly on spot and I needed it to be ex exact. Here's the on off switch. To adjust it, it's pretty easy. You take a three millimeter hex head wrench and then the laser adjustment knob is right here. Above it is that hex head and you simply loosen and to adjust the laser you just twist this 
and there are two of them to do the adjustment with. So let me uh, reposition the camera so you can see a little better. So before you start this process, tighten the table because you want it completely stationary. Because I'm going to be drilling with very, very tiny drill bits. And I don't know if you can see this one, it's pretty small. I'd like it to be as accurate as possible. And this is just slightly off. Part of the reason the laser runs on batteries is so you can adjust it with a unit unplugged. And that's just for safety. So my mark is just slightly above where the hole actually is. It's about the thickness of a human hair off. But because I'm going to be drilling such tiny little holes, I want to try and see if I can't get it exactly right. So I'm going to put a new dot. Let me loosen my clamp. Relocate to a new spot. Let me make that darker with a permanent marker. Okay, so there's my dot. Try and get this. Right on the money here. It's amazing how difficult it can be when you work in small. Okay, that's exactly where I want it to be. Oh, you know what? I just moved the table. All right. So, all right, to me that looks like it's right where I want it to go. So I'm now going to tighten that on there. Now I'm going to move to the laser. And the laser, I can tell, is a little bit to the right as I'm looking down on it. So when you adjust these, you can see when I turn it. But I've also discovered that it's hard to see exactly where the one is. So what I've decided to do is put a little piece of masking tape and block one of the lasers while I adjust the first until it's right dead on center. And now I'm going to try and tighten that with this hex head wrench. I can tell when I tighten it moves it to the right just a little bit. So I'm going to loosen. I'm going to start out right on the left. Or I'm sorry. It'd be my right as I'm facing it of my center mark and then see if this pulls it. So again, I know I'm being picky, but I want to get it as close to exact as I can. Okay, that one's set right where I want it. So I'm going to take off that piece of masking tape and I'm going to block the other and now it's time to move this one and you can see when I all I'm doing is twisting that like a like you would a thumb screw now this particular laser beam is not as thin as the other I don't know why that is okay I've got the second one adjusted everything's tight I'll remove the tape and you can see with this larger chuck it takes away my laser pointer sooner but I think it would take it away even with the smaller one to a certain point. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to turn the laser off. Turn the light on. Okay, that looks good. Now let me make another dot. And 
And if I use the laser to position and see how it does. Pretty much right on the money. I'm pretty happy with that. So for my use, that's with an acceptable range. I think if I played with it, I could probably get it even more exact. As far as the laser component, I could probably do just as well, lowering this down to a dot. This is Boiler Dan 1, where my motto is, I know a little bit about everything and a whole lot about nothing. And as always, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.